Okay, all you preppers, uh, I'm going to be covering making your own fire starters. And if you don't want to do that, I'm going to show you how to turn them into candles uh, briefly. Uh, if you've got a fireplace and you use firewood, these fire starters are absolutely perfect. And they're not like the other YouTube videos and uh, things that you see on the internet where you're using dryer lint, which is kind of crazy. Um, these actually work great if you have wet wood. It doesn't matter if they're wet. If you have uh, green wood that hasn't been seasoned properly, these will absolutely work no matter what. And you can use them in your fireplace in your home. Uh, you can also use them outside if you go camping a lot uh, and it happens to be wet outside. You don't have to worry about uh, an ignition source uh, using your cigarette lighter getting burnt like I normally do when I go camping. Uh, if I want it to rain, all I got to do is go camping. Uh, these fire starters will work great every time. You only need one or two of them in order for them to work. A lot of you are probably saying, well, why not just go to Walmart or the dollar store, get the fire logs that they have. Uh, these are loaded with all kinds of ingredients, sawdust, which is fine. That's not a problem. It's also got wax. Uh, in them that's fine uh, but they add other chemicals and you don't know what those chemicals are at least if you make your own you know exactly what's in these fire starters and you know how to make them and they're very easy and expensive to make and I can almost guarantee that you already have everything that you need uh, in your home in order to make these now basically this is what the fire starters uh, that you're going to make are going to look like they're used uh, basically they are portion cups uh, you know how when you go to a restaurant and you get like tartar sauce or some kind of sauce in a little wax cup that's exactly what this is it's a wax cup with a wick and it's also got melted wax that's all it is it's real simple uh, like I said you can get these portion cups uh, just about anywhere on the internet and I'll go into that in just a little bit now a lot of people like candles uh, there are a few that don't uh, because of the fragrances and so forth um, and you get to a point where they actually look like this and it's very hard to light them unless you get a specialized lighter to light them and even then it only burns so much of the wax uh, because the wick is actually not designed properly to burn all the wax, pro wax properly and you end up with something that looks like this so what you need to do is get all of that wax out of there a lot of people actually throw this much wax out uh, that's kind of a waste and wax doesn't deteriorate rather easily in a landfill and no I'm not trying to be an earthy crunchy I'm just trying to be uh, conservative and uh, be thrifty by actually reusing this wax and I'm going to show you how to actually reuse your wax now if you have a pressure canner or a regular canner for that matter as long as you take out the rack and you put it on the bottom and set these jars on it and of course you're gonna add water uh, this is ab absolutely a perfect great way to go ahead and melt your candle wax you don't want to put that much water in uh, you want to basically just an inch or two of water you want to make sure you stay well below half the level of the jar even if there's wax in it or not if the jar starts to float a little bit obviously you've got too much water in it now the other alternative is a double boiler as you're about to see here um, this is a different project that I have here I must have about 15 20 different kinds of stainless steel uh, pots in which I use to melt my wax now this double boiler if uh, you have basically you have one small pot and you're actually going to put that into the larger pot but you're going to make sure there's water in the larger pot first before you do that and the reason for this is you don't want the wax coming in direct contact uh, with your burner if you can help it now here's what your double burner will actually look like uh, you're going to go ahead and add water and uh, you're probably going to come up about halfway with it, three quarters of the way. Uh, like I said, you, this is used melted wax. You can also put your jars inside this in place of the wax that you're seeing here in order to go ahead and melt it. Uh, but to put your jars in here, uh, I don't know, kind of defeats the purpose. You're better off using the canner uh, to do this. But you can put your jars in here and use a double burner method if you wish to do that. It will still work. Uh, I just prefer the other way of doing it. Now if you have a larger melter, 
something like this. This will do between 100 and 150 pounds of wax. I actually have four of these. I obtained these off of a candle business that was going out of business uh, while I was in the candle business myself. Of course, I'm not doing it now. So I've got all this stuff left over, and it actually comes in handy for making these fire starters, believe it or not. Now, as you can see here, these are what I was talking about. They're called portion control cups. Uh, I call them tartar sauce cups. Uh, this is a whole case of 5,000. I've got six cases. I actually uh, do this part-time. I sell candles to convenience stores. Uh, I happen to be out in the sticks uh, where basically a lot of people burn firewood. You can find convenience stores that actually sell bundles of firewood uh, for an arm and a leg. They really screw people on these. Uh, and what I do is I go to these businesses and say, listen, I'll offer you six or eight of these in a package for so much of a price. And they jump on them. And I mean, I can't, I, I get to the point where I actually have to melt good clear wax in order to make these fire starters. And I make a killing on these things. Uh, I don't bother with eBay, but uh, you can actually make money off of this if you want to. But for a prepping standpoint, uh, these are absolutely perfect for starting a fire in an emergency situation. Uh, if you're camping or anything like that. And I'll go into further detail shortly. Now you can order a whole case of 5,000, but I think that's going a little bit overboard, unless you really want to get into prepping. I've got a huge room uh, full of these fire starters. I, I burn through them rather quickly. If you want to get smaller quantities, you can get them from restaurant supply houses for next to nothing. Uh, you can also get them from eBay, relatively uh, inexpensive, and they are wax coated. That's a good thing about them, and they will hold the hot wax if you pour it in there you just got to make sure your wax isn't over 135 140 degrees uh, because it'll deteriorate the wax coating and these can get a little bit messy so you have to be careful on how you're working uh, if you're using a hard surface to work on uh, that's what you want to go with something that's easy to scrape the wax off with like I said before if you have a lot of uh, candle wax kicking around and as you can see here I have eh, just a little bit uh, and you want to melt it, uh, you can throw it all together. You don't need to worry about the color. They're going to be used for fire starters, so you don't have to worry about uh, what color they are, what they're going to smell like, or anything like that. Uh, if you scrounge around, if, you have, if you're anything like me, and um, you have candles all over the place, Yankee candles, dollar store candles, you name it. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't have mentioned Yankee, but I did. I actually worked for them for seven years, and believe it or not, uh, the entire time I worked for them, they didn't have these fire starters. They didn't exist or anything like them. Uh, now they're producing uh, uh, fire starters, but they're nothing like these. Believe me, these are a lot better. You won't be disappointed in them if uh, you make them. Now this isn't going to be a completely how-to. Uh, what I did was I showed you how to melt the wax using the double boiler method. I showed you the cups or portion cups rather and the rest is up to you on how you're gonna put it in the cups I use a measuring cup believe it or not uh, Pyrex to be exact and the reason I do that is, is it has a spout on it and uh, those actually work great for this because you can leave the wax in the double boiler and just uh, dip into it with the measuring cup make sure it's glass and it's Pyrex uh, it doesn't have to be Pyrex brand, but it should be glass. Uh, that way you can dip in, take the wax as you need it, and put it into the cups individually. It works that simple. Uh, there's nothing to it. Uh, if you do notice, uh, if you notice here, uh, there's a wick in it. You don't have to put a wick in it. Um, it makes it easier to light. Uh, you can get away with just lighting the rim and it's that simple. Now if you decide you want to get wicks you're gonna have or make candles uh, from your old wax or you want to take your Yankee candles that have melted down and make them into votives then you're gonna have to make an investment into wicks and we'll go over that next. Now if you decide you want to make candles uh, the best place to go is paramold.com that would be paramold.com it's Paramold Manufacturing. Uh, they produce a bunch of different kinds of wicks, and they're basically going to be cheaper than anywhere else. If you're going to go large scale, you can, to give you a rough idea, these are six inch. 
uh, and you can get a thousand of them for about twenty-five, thirty dollars. Uh, they're very friendly. They'll talk you through everything you need to know on the phone uh, from start to finish. If you want to uh, actually make stuff into candles, it's rather easy. Now, chances are you're going to need glassware if you're going to make your stuff into candles. If you decide that's what you're going to do, uh, as you can see, uh, I got a couple. Uh, all of this is candle glass, believe it or not, or uh, protective candle holders for uh, holding the glass so they don't get broken. Uh, just to give you an idea of how much of it that I actually have in stock ready to go uh, in case I uh, lose power or something like that. Now obviously you're not going to be doing large scale like me, uh, but you can buy candle glass like this from Benjamin Franklin, uh, from Walmart, uh, there's AC Moore, there's a bunch of different places where you can buy candle glass from. And these are the different styles that you can go with. So if you don't like one, you can go with another. It's real simple. Keep in mind if you're going to go with uh, smaller candles, uh, votive glass, you're going to have to go with smaller wicks. If you look at these wicks, they already have numbers on them and those are the ones that you can actually use and they will actually work efficiently uh, and they will burn completely and there's other wicks on here prior to this that you'll see that you can use on larger candles in other words taller candles now if you want to get fancy you can put them in containers like this uh, these can be obtained from the places that I mentioned before like Walmart, AC Moore, a uh, bunch of different places now if you decide you want to take the jar route you can do that uh, you're going to need larger wicks though or longer wicks I should say that's where these come in and like I have at the top paramold.com that's where you would get your wicks cheaper than anything but uh, if you want you can get them from eBay as well now if you don't want to make your own candles and you just want to buy them you can buy them 288 to a case on eBay uh, they are rather expensive unfortunately and you will pay for them. Uh, they're about $55 on eBay, which averages out to about 19 cents a piece if you buy them this way. Uh, that's if you don't want to make them yourself and you just want to buy them to have them on hand in case of an emergency. And from the picture here, this shows you what they look like in the case. There's actually 36 to a tier and there's two tiers to our box. One thing I forgot to mention is you can buy these from Paramold dot com as well uh, it's gonna be cheaper than eBay most likely here's your dimensions in case you decide you want to put them in photo glass they're almost about inch and a quarter tall and if you put them in a photo glass they're uh, actually perfect and they're about an inch and a quarter in diameter as well this is what they look like inside the glassware as you can see they don't fit quite snug but uh, an emergency situation if you need lighting or something like that these are uh, gonna actually be perfect here's a top view coming up right here like I said you can see the space around the sides so they are gonna drip a little bit but you can remelt this wax and if you want add more wicks to it I'm just trying to give people different alternatives uh, for lighting hopefully this helps somebody out I welcome any comments or suggestions Thanks for watching.